In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness, health, and life questions from listeners like you who post these questions on our Mind Just Pump Just like you, Susie. Media Instagram page under the Qua meme. So if you want us to answer one of your questions, go to Instagram, go to Mind Pump Media, ask us a question, and then we may pick it. Uh, we also talk about our lives, studies, and random things. We do that in the intro portion of the episode. So here's what this episode was all about. We opened it up by talking about the random pre-podcast supplement stack that I found <laughs> in the closet. Maybe we'll reveal that someday. A lot of companies send us uh, random supplements and stuff, and a lot of times we don't it work with them. It was not cocaine. But I find the stuff, and I mix it together and give it to the guys and see what happens, and boy, did we get weird. But it did remind me of how much I liked the Four Sigmatic coffee. They actually make coffee now, but they infuse it with things like ashwagandha or lion's mane. That's my favorite one. The Lion's Mane cof Coffee for Sigmatic was fire in my brain. Now, we do have a special Mind Pump code for you if you want to check them out. Go to Four Sigmatic, that's F O U R S I G M A T I C dot com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump at checkout. You'll get 15% off. Then we talked about Justin's Chicken didn't make it. Justin's oh. Chicken did not make it. Died. R.I.P. We talked about scary stories on Netflix and how Justin and his wife couldn't sleep that night. No. There's a apparently a haunted house uh, that if you can make it through, you win 20 grand. No one's made it. That's kind of weird. We watched some crazy videos on that. Yeah. Then we talked about uh, NCI certifications. This is a company that we're working with that provides uh, quality nutrition certifications for trainers and fitness coaches. And then this. They came out with this insane promotion. Ready for this? Anybody, anybody who goes to this website, ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump can get a free gut health course. Look so this, under your chair right now. <laughs> so this is a whole course on gut health. It's a $600 course. It's free. So all of you, even if a thousand of you go on there, you'll get a free course. Make sure you go check that out. Then I talked about a study on how younger moms are more likely to have children with ADHD and then we talked about the ideal age to have children. And then I talked about how Twitter is not going to be doing any political ads this coming political Ooh, bold season. Bold move, Twitter. Then we got into the fitness portion of the episode. First question, do macros really matter? Macros, proteins, fats, and carbs. Are those really important to pay attention to? Next question, this person wants to know what the hierarchy is for variables that you adjust in your training. Reps, sets. Uh, you know, the tempo, the exercises, like which ones should you change first to get your body to continue progressing? The third question, this person wants to know how we deal with all the people in the industry who preach that their diet or workout is the best one. Um, and the final question, this one's kind of off topic, but because we consider ourselves experts in everything, we decided yeah, to answer it. Go for it. The question was, what are our tactics for keeping our wives on our side and happy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tactics. Mental warfare. It's, the way it was worded even was terrible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, right now we're having a launch special of a new program. It's MAPS Powerlift. So this is a workout program designed to get you super strong at the three main powerlifting lifts, bench press, deadlift, and squat. In fact, if you're an experienced lifter and you want to compete in a powerlifting competition, this is a great program to follow. So you can enroll in it. It's 12 weeks. We'll take you from where you're at now to ready to compete. Now, for those of you who don't want to compete, it's a phenomenal program for strength building, muscle building, metabolism boosting. I highly recommend it to people who want to take their, uh, their focus off of their body and onto their performance. So if you're body obsessed and you're kind of stressed out about weighing yourself, looking in the mirror, and you want to just have a three-month period where you just worry about getting stronger. That's all you're doing. Yeah. Wonderful program. Now, because we're launching it and we're in the, the, the beginning phases of the launch, there is a $40 off promotion. There's only two days left for this. So it's 48 hours left as of the airing of this podcast. This promotion is going to end Sunday, November 3rd. Here's what you do to get $40 off. Go to Maps Power Lift. Dot com and use the code POWER40, P-O-W-E-R-4-0, no space for the discount. And by the way, you'll also get a free MAPS Powerlift t-shirt. One more note, this program is not going to be going not. on sale again. No more this year. This entire year. So 100% if you, if you not don't going take, on sale. If you don't take advantage of the $40 off now, you'll have to pay full price until possibly mid-next year. Again, it's MAPSPowerlift.com and use the code Power 40. What did I give us? 
five Dude. minutes ago, 10, 20 minutes ago. Something. You guys feel fire? Do you guys feel weird? I I feel about as weird I'm as you get the taste out of my mouth. I know that much. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel about as weird as your socks. Oh, you like these? Yeah. <laughs> These are my camping socks. <laughs> Bro, I mean, they look warm. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're your, your ankles are very <laughs> those, I covered. Have, I have some of those. My grandma knits them for me Dude, every year for so, Christmas. That's, she that's, does. that's weird. Your grandma knitted these for me too. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's, that's, Bing. Yeah. Uh, they're they're super cozy. She's you a guys nice don't like, grandma. You guys don't like cozy socks? I do when I'm sitting around the fire in my house at night, you know, oh, in my well, pajamas. You know, I spit fire, so I might as well wear them. Yeah. <laughs> Another hey. one. Bing, bing. That's two in a row. I don't know. No, that was forced. Anyway, speaking of uh, stuff that makes you feel interesting, well, see what we what we did is we just took a bunch of random supplements in the back. I love how you guys just <laughs> yeah. take it, whatever. I it was give like you. wheel of supplements, yeah. dude, dude. But dude, did you guys you guys like the Four Sigmatic coffee? Yeah. Okay. Love it. Okay. Uh, okay go you, ahead. You guys tried the one with uh, ashwagandha and Tulsi. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Balances it out. Yeah. I tried the one with lion's mane, fuego. I haven't had that one. Fire. But have you had the contrast of both? Yes. Well, okay, so you we, know what the other one's like. Yes. Okay. Back up because I always forget. Because that's what, a nice even, like it kept me like really sharp for a long period of time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Back up, back up. Explain the, I always forget, I'm, I confuse all my mushrooms all the time. Explain which ones yeah. for why? Why this the difference for eating? Why? This why is, is why is this one? Way. Why is one have? Why is well, ashwagandha and tulsi are not mushrooms. They're just uh, adaptogenic herbs. So this is what's cool. So four sigmatic, put ashwagandha and tulsi in one of. So this is actual coffee. So for the listeners listening, it's not the mushroom coffee that they make. This is actual coffee, real coffee. And I can confirm it's good. Yeah, and then they put ash. And Adam, Finally, yeah, Adam's super yeah, picky about Adam's, yeah everything. Has to taste this. In fact, <laughs> I gave him a random supplement, and he's like, "I'll never take this Ooh. again." Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. it was garbage, just like, retching, oh. like yeah. a big baby. Anyway, this is coffee, and then ashwagandha and tulsi are both calming adaptogenic substances. So the caffeine. With the calming effects of ashwagandha and tulsi, it means you get an even high. So it will. takes away what that jittery feeling that some people get from coffee. You're just smooth. Yeah. You just feel smooth. So, similar feeling like theanine gives me? Yeah. I like theanine's one of my favorite things to take with caffeine also. Yes. Yeah. Now, lion's mane is different. That tastes like butt, though, by itself. What does? Theanine. By, what are you doing tasting? It's a capsule. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing tasting butt? Have you even tried that? <laughs> butt <Yeah>. or theanine? <laughs> <laughs> You don't do that? <laughs> no, I don't open the All capsule. Right. It's sprinkle it in my mouth. I'm on my own here. Yeah, I'm on a lonely island of, of um, experimentation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just as like, it's going to work faster if I <laughs> just sprinkle does. this to my face. Either that or snort it. It tastes yeah. familiar. What is that? But yeah. uh, no. Uh, but aftertaste. <laughs> lion's mane, incre- this is statistically proven, increases BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotropic factor, and... Uh, there's something else that raises too. I gotta look it up. It's another. Yeah, but what does that mean? These are things that are basically make like, you sharper. They're like miracle grow for the brain. Oh. So I'm when I did that one, it. I did that one yesterday before I worked out because I did a 5 a.m. workout with uh, with Jessica. Drank that in the morning and was just I was on fucking I don't know what I was on. What'd you guys listen to? Don't lie either. Huh? What'd you hey, listen to? What do we listen don't to? Lie. Oh, 90, hey, 90s hip hop. Hey, hey, 90s oh. hip hop. Yes. No, no, we didn't listen to no? Enya. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I was searching for it. No, I think she gave in, dude. In the morning? Yeah, now she's just like, put whatever you want on. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know why? Because she listens to the podcast. She feels bad. Feels bad. Yeah, see, we hooked you up, bro. <laughs> yeah. We hooked you up by fucking razzing you about that. Now she's like, That's God right. damn it, I feel bad. Yeah. Make my man listen yeah, to Enya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being anyway. a good, good sport. And yeah, we just helped you. Anyway, dude, Justin. Yeah. Uh, so, how was your experiment with feeding your chickens chicken nuggets? Did they survive? <laughs> what <laughs> did you? You did it, not do lie. that. No, I didn't. No, what he's referring to is Straight I woke to up hell for that. Hey, I wouldn't do that. I, no. I'm not turning them into cannibals, man. I don't, I'm not into that. <laughs> I, I just bullshit. Yeah, he, he said his chicken died. Oh, it died. So I'm teasing him right now. I walked outside. Well, first, I guess Courtney noticed that you know one of the chickens was just like laying sprawled out, just like bleh, with its eyes kind of like back. And so I went out there and I'm. Uh, you know, it, it totally was was rigor mortis had set in everything. It was like super stiff as a board. CPR. Yeah, I figured it was because I was peeing outside. You know, it was a big shock there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with theories. I have no idea what killed it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe it was sick. Maybe it choked on something. I have no idea. I'm trying to play into your she whole chicken like, fucker thing. Okay? You big, guys aren't with me today. She's yeah. like, I can't eat that worm. Oh it's my too God. big. Oh, it's so big. Uh, heart attack. Uh, nobody got the joke. <laughs> um, so I had to discard it, and uh, you know, I just threw it in the trash. I mean, like is that what you do with a dead chicken? You just throw it in the you trash. It, you, yeah. don't, you don't fry it up. No. What are you gonna do? I mean, we're gonna have a little ceremony. It's it's like I look at it as food. I mean, that's 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 what they are. Like, they're not like pets to me. She looks at more of his pets, so I tried to kind of be cool and, uh, you know, respectful about it and all that stuff. But like, I honestly, they're they're just walking around. They're like the dumbest animal, dude. They Chickens are, the are. They're so yeah. dumb. They're super. And they're but aggressive. I loved their eggs, so I was a little bit upset about that. And what I was which get one? More eggs. Which one was this? Because you named them, right? Or the kids this one them? was feathers, I believe. Real original. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, so that one went. That's um, like my daughter. How many, the cool ones are still there. How so. many? How many are you down to now? I got three now. It's crazy. Like coyotes have gotten one. Uh, like a raccoon got one. And uh, so now this one just sporadically just croaked. Now, but, is there a reason why you're not replacing them? Are you are you just like we're gonna run this until it's out? And then yeah, I kind of I kind of had a deal with, with Courtney about that. I'm like, once they're gone, it's sort of like I'm I'm slowly gonna be taking over that part of the backyard again and and using it for other things. So uh, we'll see. But like. It is like, I don't know, I go back and forth with it a lot because I do enjoy having eggs and having that fresh egg kind of thing in the morning so we all like benefit from it. All the kids eat, like, that's one of the, the, the main things, that and bacon. How so. many eggs do you make every day or they make every day? So we have at least, uh, sometimes we have six to, so they'll either do two eggs or sometimes they'll just do one, so. So every day? Yeah, every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and are they, are the egg yolks real like gold because they eat the bugs and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So we let them out like in midday. We'll let them out and kind of forge around. I wonder if that's why you're getting the rats. Are they coming because the chicken? Oh, hundred percent, dude. We didn't have them before we had the chickens. They, they totally oh, attracted them oh, because wow. of the feed. And then like we'll throw all this uh, scraps. And yeah, shit. scraps of like leftover like oh, vegetables no and shit. fruit. That's exactly why you have fucking rats. Hundred percent, dude. That hella sucks. Dude. So that's another reason why I'm like, <laughs> let's get rid of these because then we'll get rid of the rats and then you know the the whole ecosystem is going to kind of close down. And it'll get back to normal, but yeah. So I didn't even think about that. That's 100% why you have those rats now. Yeah, totally. And if you go and look it up, and, and they say it's that. very common, yeah, like like chickens, you have, you're you going to expect you're going to get rats. Damn, dude. That's yeah. crazy. So. so are you guys watching these scary movies right now because it's Halloween? Hell or no. Yeah, dude. Oh, of course you don't watch We shit. watched a, a few of them. There's this, on Netflix, they were doing like a, a series where people tell their stories and then they, they reenact them. And there was some like super creep. We watched two, and then we had to watch like a comedy something to decompress afterwards. That's was, what Jessica does. Oh my god, dude! There was some of them that were so freaky. There was one like demon that was living inside this basement that would like mimic the people and like kind of show himself. And then, uh, anyways, it was like so disturbing visually. And then I. I forgot about it, and I had great sleep. Uh, Courtney was just like grabbing me all night. She never cuddles, and was just like holding me like for dear life. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? That's Jessica. We'll watch a scary movie, and then she'll be like, okay, let's watch something else. I'm like, I'm sorry, babe. It's ten o'clock. Time to go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> she knows. I can't sleep. Though. Like, no. Katrina only doesn't even like to watch like a drama or a thriller before bed. We really? always have to put some like oh, I love scary movies. Yeah, man. lightweight comedy. By the way. Uh, have you guys seen uh, Shit's Creek yet? I haven't seen it yet. No, you were talking about that yesterday. Yeah, so th I've seen the I've seen the the title or whatever. So that we I always like to have a show like this. I love finding a show that has like I think it has five seasons. So I I had never seen it before. This is the neat thing about Netflix. How Netflix recommends stuff, and it pops up, and I'm like, oh, what is this? And it's like a twenty minute, twenty four minute episode. You know, they're short episodes, and it's totally silly you know it's not it's not like you have to be really into it but that's a perfect example of like if we watch something that's really heavy like it doesn't even have to be scary just a heavy mo movie katrina does not like to go to bed on that like we always have to watch something light or sports if we're, we're watching sports a lot of time before we go to bed but if we're not watching sports i've got to finish the night on like see a, i went yeah, to watch the mind just keeps running uh -huh. yeah my cousin was like dude you gotta watch the fourth kind i'm like fourth kind he's like so scary it's about alien abductions and then they show a split screen between the actual uh, hypnosis interview of the victims and then the reenactment. So they're showing what really happened. Mm -hmm. And then so I'm like, what? This is kind of interesting. Like it's showing like real people 
talking about their experiences and shit. So I'm watching it and I'm like, this looks the reenactment the 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 supposed real video looks too good to yeah. be. <laughs> so then I did a little research. It's, it's like, like the Blair Witch Project, hundred percent, dude. Yeah. Same scam. Huh? Yeah, in the beginning uh, of it, the beginning of it, the actress comes out. She's like, all of these stories are based on true stuff. Yeah, they I'm get like, away with it for like the first week, and then it gets out. Yeah, and I'm like, like, you ah, could just fucking stupid. lie yeah. now. You don't even have to be <laughs> telling the truth. You just come out with a movie. Hey, these are all based on true stories. They're working for the news, right? Yeah, yeah. no, they're not. They're based off of that's, true stories you made up. That's like the, the macronutrients that FDA allows you for labels. God, it's just a lot of room, a lot of. It's room there. kind of around here. It's yeah. ba- there's got to be somewhat it's of a true story room. in this. When I was a kid, I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, that oh, was that show, fucking man. creepy. Yeah. The music that would come on, and then the th- and then the Unsolved Mysteries would appear on the screen. Yeah, and it was always based off true. So that's what would fuck me up. Well, wasn't the host like he he was like uh, compelled to kind of start that show because like uh, something had happened that. Somebody had been t- abducted or taken. No, that's family. America's Most Wanted. Oh, that's America's Most Wanted. That's the oh, one okay. where his son was kidnapped. Getting those confused. That, yeah, that yeah. guy, the host's son, was actually kidnapped from America's Most Wanted. Right. That's why he did that that's show. That's crazy. Now, Unsolved Mysteries had some weird stuff, uh, you know, like like ghosts or, you know, uh, aliens or Bigfoot. Oh, or, right, 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 right. Though, I'll tell you something. This is so funny, too. I Almost nothing scared me, uh, you know, the scary movie-wise or whatever, or stories. But the two most random things used to freak me out, and they still get me freaked out a little bit. Bigfoot stories. I don't know why they scare me. <laughs> They're just weird. I always think to myself, like, fuck, if I'm in the woods, you know? Now, do you think that's because... I always think when you have something like that, it's because you probably saw something when you were a little kid. Like, did you watch Harry and the Hendersons when you were little? Yeah, that wasn't scary. Oh, see, that was scary. I was little enough that was scary. You were scared of scared Harry and the Harry? Hendersons? Well, don't forget, you're like fucking 20 years older than I am. So I'm like, a, so I'm three was, years older than you. I was, I was really little when that came out. Okay, so let's, look up, yeah, Dun, yeah, let's look up the date. Look up the date. If you're Harry. anything over 12, I'm going to make fun of you. You better be. Oh, you better have man. been eight. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. I think so. I think it was that. I think. Really? It was, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was. It was pretty young. Yeah. No. No. Bigfoot and then alien, alien stories oh, and those shit. Two? Freak me the See, fuck. Just me. Out. Me were just like demon and like exorcist stuff. Like that always got me. Like mm. I just couldn't because. And that was another one that we had watched. It, it showed this this lady. Eighty seven. That- I was six, bro. Fuck oh, you. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hella right. scary, right. bro. When you're six. <laughs> <laughs> Six years old. He's got such a nice smile. Wait, hold though. on Come a second. On. Hold on a second. hundred percent so friendly. No, no, no. I'm gonna do the math. Hundred percent. You don't watch this at the movies. Came out in eighty seven. By the time it hit TV, nineteen ninety, you're like ten. Wow. 11. No. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You watch this shit on TV? No. Uh, I guarantee we rented this movie. If we didn't watch it in, in the theater. Sal's, Sal's yeah. No, I saw that. Mm, no, nice try. Nineteen eighty seven. Oh yeah, maybe eighty nine, uh, maybe two years later or maybe, a year later. Yeah, uh, six, eight. Get get out of here, bro. That's young. <laughs> That's young enough. You know what? Part I remember. I remember when they hit him. That was like that was the scariest part. Oh, with the car. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they hit him, and then you're trying to figure out what it is. And doesn't he jump out when they first because he's alive, dude? Or so, no, he like, comes alive later on. They put him on his roof, and then they find right, later on they, he comes they put, alive. like a tarp over him. Yeah, bro, then, six years yeah. old. Hell, was scary. Well, see, because when I was younger, when I was in elementary school, we used to have like we could go to the library and pick whatever book we wanted to read for book reports and stuff. Yeah. And I was always getting the weird like unsolved mystery books. And they had this whole series, and like one was on Bermuda Triangle, one was on the Loch Ness Monster, whatever. And I'd read all of them and just freak myself out, dude, every single time. <laughs> but the Bigfoot and the alien shit, man, aliens scared the shit out of me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, dude, I told you guys my scary story. That's why I, I, I like the paranormal stuff. Like gets to me. Oh, when you were playing the music? Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But you were hella stone, you said. I was. Didn't one of you guys that time? <laughs> hey, the second, it had another occurrence when, when I was totally sober. Was it you guys or was it one of my friends that was telling me that they do like a, a haunted house that pays like 20 grand if you- Yes. Did. So It was you? Well, no, I, I didn't do it. I, somebody had sent me a link to this this uh, story about that. Like there was this company that had invested all this money in this haunted house and like uh, nobody's nobody's ever gone all the way through that's done it. And you have to like sign all these waivers, have a doctor kind of sign off on your mental health. That's your, part your of the show. I regular bet, health. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. But then they find out like what scares you the most and they kind of get that. And then they, they build it around that. And then like like the whole thing is just about like what I have no idea. How like, do you the, not get through for twenty grand? Right? Yeah, even me. Can't bro, you just I'll laugh go, it off? I'll go through some shit. Like I'll that. be solid. If yeah. they can't touch you, like what 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 can they do? I don't know. 
Yeah. What, are they, what, what are they get scary with? Right. I, our IRS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they show you some really fucked up video first, too, to even see if you you have the ability to get through like the door of it. Like, How well, if you know it's not going to kill you, right. right? I mean, unless they're pouring spiders on you or some shit. I feel like Sal should do it. Me? Yeah. Oh, I wonder if they could do because that would creep me out. Like, like if they do actual bugs and shit. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. dump a bucket of spiders on you. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. would run out for yeah. that, bro. Tony Grant, not enough. <laughs> yeah. Not enough. <laughs> that's a good, going in there with the machete. That's dude. a good thought right there. That's a, that would get me out of there. Yeah, that's cheating. Is I'd be it? so angry. You know what I mean? I'd make it towards the end. And they throw co- cockroaches on you. Be like, you fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> you cheated. Did you guys ever see that? That there was like a half marathon or a mar- I don't know, it was like a run, and it was called I think it was called Zombie Run or something like that. That's uh-huh. an app. That is an app. Okay, well, there was a there was an actual run that was like this a race where you're running and you're going through a maze and it's supposed to be like a, a workout run or whatever and then people jump out and chase you uh, as yeah. you're running. Well, that's the idea of the app. That's is it really? Funny. Yeah, the so app, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be running from zombies in the in the app. So this is like a real live role play kind of an experience, huh? That you, like you're no like literally people dressed up as yeah. monsters or zombies and then they come and they chase you. Yeah. Tell me that wouldn't give you the best freaking workout of your life. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> All adrenaline. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you know what happens as you're running, just because you're running, your brain is already putting in your mind that you're already scared. Mm-hmm. Then something starts chasing you, so you just start running uh, a little <laughs> faster. Hey, did either one of you guys get a chance to talk to Danny since he got back from NCI? Yeah, he said it was really good. He loved it. Yeah. He yeah. said it was really good. He said he's that, a picky little fuck, too. He's <laughs> been to all of them, too. Yeah, like, yeah, all no, the different certifications. Like, everything. Yeah, he'll yeah. break it down. Yeah, no. Danny has everything, and he's like, you know how he is, right? Uh, there's a few things that I would do. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's quick to point everything mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, no. He said that the way that they showed you how to apply the information that you're teaching was what was crucial. Yeah. Because a big thing in, with personal training courses or certifications, the big problem I've always had is, okay, that's great. You learned all this great information. <laughs> yeah. How do you apply it to your client? Right. How do you deal with that these situations? Like? That's where you get the value. But apparently with the course at NCI, it's all based around that. So they'll have case studies like, you know, 39-year-old Mrs. Smith and this these are her things and here's her goals. How would you design her nutrition? What are the first steps? So he also, did yeah. you know that he also took all their master courses too there? So he's, he, he did, did the whole deal. Wow. Yeah, he did like the whole deal, which is like a so, sponge. And I love what we're doing with Jason right now. This is uh, probably one of my favorite companies that we're working with Dude, right now. Dude, he's giving away. I know. This is crazy to me. because I And I actually asked him to correct this several times. Mm-hmm. For Mind Pup listeners, all of them, it doesn't matter how many people go to the site, all of you will get a $600 gut health course for free. Yeah. Every single person. Yeah. I feel like you're Oprah right now. No. I, I feel like he's Oprah right now. Yeah. <laughs> so you literally will go on the site, which is ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get a course on gut health for free, and the course is normally $600. Yeah. Which is, I wish they had something That's like this a huge when I was. Deal, yeah. Well, Dude. me too, as a trainer. What a, I mean, what a cool it's, offer. and it's not just like learning about gut health. It's also how to apply that knowledge to to your clients. Dude, I don't care if you're not a, if you're not a trainer. Yeah. I would go on there if I have if you have gut issues, go on there and mm-hmm. learn how to apply the lo- knowledge on yourself. Yeah, it's free because right. you know gut health is a you know you guys know I talk about it all the time. It's a super uh, common issue now. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's going all over the place. So anyway. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Dude, I was reading um, this article, and I wanted to bring it up because it highlights – you know how we always talk about how you should kind of look deeper into studies and, you know, try to think of them from different angles because sometimes it's not what they necessarily seem to be? So there were these studies that came out that showed that younger moms, so uh, women who have children in the younger ages, are far more likely – to have children with ADHD. Really? Yes. Huh. So now at first glance, without digging deeper, right? At first glance, what do you automatically want to think? That having a child when you're young increases the odds for some reason being young, having a baby is going to be more likely to give them ADHD, right? Well, uh, yeah. Okay, my theory would be because they're put them in front of electronics and things like that all day long to be Maybe a babysitter. they're not quite as mature yet. Yeah, they're probably not as as mature themselves and, and think about the importance of probably spending time and parenting them, and so you just kind of throw them in front of things. Well, that- so that's part of it. That's part of my thought, too, is, if is you know, uh, ADHD symptoms get worse, according to what I've read, that uh, when, when kids are 
are like that when they're not engaged with when they're you know uh, not playing with others yeah so- socializing yeah they're, they're doing these 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 kind of distracting type of things it, it without structure it can make ADHD symptoms worse but there is a very strong heritability with ADHD they've actually shown that uh, hmm. quite convincingly that if you if a parent has ADHD their child is likely to have ADHD and it's biological so then if you go even so deeper, does the age matter then well that's what I was gonna say okay people with ADHD also tend to be more impulsive uh, impulsivity could lead to having a baby early right uh, young sex unprotected sex uh, so this as I'm reading this I'm thinking this and in the article they even touch on it a little bit. But you know, to the average person who doesn't really dig deep, they're gonna think, "Oh crap, I'm gonna wait to have kids later because, and even if they're ready, because I don't want them to have." <laughs> right. The reality is, the healthiest physically that you'll be to have a child is younger. But then there's also a lot of other factors, right? Money, maturity, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but if you're these days, if you're impulsive, the odds that you'll that you'll have unprotected sex probably go up. Yeah. So then, okay, I have ADHD, impulsive, yeah, young sex. Sense. My child is more likely to have ADHD. Anyway, I just thought it was a good study to kind of break down why you want to look deeper into, now, into certain things. Now, you guys obviously, and this isn't saying that uh, you would do anything different because I know you, you love your children and we wouldn't change that. But knowing where you're at in your life right now and your age, your wisdom, uh, and and then also when you had your kids, mm-hmm. do you would you say there it, you know there was a sweet spot of timing in your life that like oh you know what. Probably having them at this age, I think, would have been the most optimal uh, for me. Boy, uh, I think having them young was uh, slightly an advantage. Actually, getting through the uh, the weathering sort of the storm of what you know you might be experiencing <laughs> right now. Like, I'm glad that's over with, dude. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Uh, and now, like having being more relaxed and mature, and, and you know, being comfortable with where we're at in life. Like, I feel like. Uh, it too, where like I could be involved, like the, the way that like, I guess now our, since our business has, has gotten to a point now where, uh, I can be at, I can coach like after we're done working or I could do some things where I'm like really more vested. Whereas before that I was like grinding bell to bell, right? you know, just trying to get to a place where I could like make sense of like creating uh space for that. Dude, um, so, so you were 29 or 30. How old were you? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was thirty. I was, I was thirty. I was twenty-five. You were young. I had my son. Yeah, and, and, and you know, there's a plus. There's a there's pluses and minuses to either. It's hard to say because obviously I would never change anything. Because, right. That's why. That's why I'm trying to. But if we're being kind of like if exactly, it's both. Yeah. yeah. Let's say I'm talking to someone else and I'm advising, and they don't yes. have kids yet. Yes. Um, and they are. Remember, I was married. I had been married. I was 22 when I got married, so I'd already been married for three years. I had already owned a house. Um, I was already, you know, we were stable, no debt, that kind of stuff. So the monetary stuff was okay. I had lots of family around that could help. Um, of course, maturity level, not as good. Um, or you, you're obviously going to be more mature the older you are. The pluses of being a younger parent are this. You have a lot more energy. Yeah. You really do. As a 40-year-old man now, and I'm healthy and fit and all that stuff, but boy, it just seems so much more daunting because of the amount of energy that it requires because it just takes a lot of energy. And it's funny watching my parents watch – because my parents had four kids – and we weren't we were rambunctious kids. We weren't quiet, easy kids. And seeing my parents now babysit my sister's kids and my kids, and I see my mom is just exhausted by the end mm-hmm. of the day. She's like, I'm and my mom was like Energizer Bunny when I was a kid. She, she was a young mom too. She could just go on forever. So the energy thing's a big one. The other thing is, you know, as you're older as a grandparent, if you have grandchildren, you'll be a younger grandparent. You can enjoy them more. But then again, if you take care of yourself and you're fit and healthy, you should live a healthy long life. The drawbacks are you're not as mature. Yeah. You're probably you're more reactionary. Yeah, like you're I was very like ah yeah, like you're, deer you're in the headlights. Ex- less secure with who you are. You right. Know, so knowing stuff. both those sides, if you were to give just a, a, a fake number, right, to it or to somebody, you're talking to a, a young teen you're talking to your boys. Mm. Okay. You're talking to your your boys about 
getting married and having kids in the next 10 years, right? And and you, what would you say? I know you wouldn't say, son, don't wait till you're this age. I know right. it doesn't work that way. But what do you think is a sweet spot age for each of I'd you? Say early thirties. Yeah, for 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 a man, I would say early thirties. Probably for for a woman, maybe a little yeah, earlier, like later twenties, because 20s, yeah. they have uh, you know the biological clock. Yeah. Although you know, fit and healthy that can stretch out too. Right. But I would probably say. Early, probably early 30s is what I would say. So this is what always made me wait as long as I did was I used to ask that question to like all of my clients. I was just just curious, like all of them that were successful and lots of them that had multiple kids and kids that were old and grown. And the the most common thing that I heard was everybody loved their kids, was happy when they had their kids, wouldn't change anything. But they all would say like, but if I waited a few more years later... I would have been just fine with that. Nobody ever said, I wish I would have had it earlier. earlier. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> yeah, said, said that. Well, Not you, one. Have you talked to a parent who had kids much later? Like 45 or older? Yeah, because I had some clients. Not anybody like that. So I've had some clients like that. Um, <clears throat> I've had some uh, male clients who's who had second marriage, and they were in their like early to mid 40s when they had their other I had one man who had – I had one client who was a guy who was 50 and had uh, another child. And they were all like, "Oh boy, it's way it's it's so hard with the energy and stuff." It's yeah, I can different. imagine fifty. I would think is crazy. Yeah, but forty even, is probably fine. Even forty as a man, if you're if especially if you have a a little bit younger wife, I yeah. think, or you're both are really fit and, and you're healthy. healthy. I yes. mean, that like Katrina and I. I mean, Katrina's yeah. thirty nine. I'm thirty eight. Yeah. And you guys are both fit and healthy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah you yeah. know. So, but that was that was a lot of the reason why I think I waited as long as I did was I I used to ask that I asked that every time to my clients. So curious what everybody else thought. I think at the end of the day, it's up to the it's, it's in, total preference individual thing. dude because like look look at my parents right. My parents got married when they were nineteen. Had me when they were twenty. My dad was mature. My parents were mature as fuck at twenty. My dad has been working full time, okay, yeah. like ten, twelve hours a day since he was nine. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I've he, known some people. One of my friends was like that. Like even in high school, was working like two, three jobs. Yeah, and then like ba like basically graduated from high school and then just like had a kid like right after that. And he was like totally ready. Like he was, he was an old soul. Well, it's, you know, modern society is really stretched out adolescence. You today need so many more skills and be more prepared to support yourself than you did a hundred years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, a hundred years ago, 17, 18 years old, you're, you've got all the skills. You've been working since you were 13, whatever. Today, it's like, you know, you're not going to do very well. You need, you need to have a lot of training, a lot of experience. People live longer. Um, but now we're kind of butting up against uh, our physiology, right? Because you know a woman's you know the thing, clock. The, the thing that I think was most important for waiting later was because if you I, I like you, Sal, if I had a kid at twenty five, I you know had my house, made really good money, four hundred one k benefits, mm -hmm. like I was in a very secure place in my life. Uh, I've been considered an old soul since I was younger, so pretty mature for my age, uh, but. What I hadn't worked completely through is a lot of my still deep-rooted insecurities, and I think I would have let, allowed those to bleed into my son. For example, like a big one for me was coming from nothing, and then the early years of making money, I overcompensated because mm -hmm. of that. I spent a lot of money. I flashed a lot of money. I paid for a lot of other people, and if I'm being completely honest with myself, what I probably would have done to my son is he would have had all the most expensive clothes, would have had all the crazy toys, would I, and it would have been me living vicariously through him mm -hmm. and still working through my insecurities, not knowing that I was probably setting him up for a fucking yeah. Well, plus you hadn't you hadn't you weren't with <clears throat> Katrina at that time, right? You know, um, it all works out. I think exactly the way it's supposed to. I really, I, I really do. So, and it it really depends on the individual man. I know a lot of. 38 year old 39 year old guys that are not ready to have kids <laughs> yeah, should not yeah, yeah, right. have kids you know yeah, what i'm saying right, right. and then i know some Definitely. in their in their 20s that are probably going to make phenomenal parents if they were to have 
kids now. But you know, nowadays, like I said, I think it's what's the av- average age of a parent has gone up quite a bit. And it depends. It has, yeah, it has. Yeah, a yeah, lot, yeah. right? That was, that was in that book, Igen. They went over the stats on that. It's continuing to to get pushed out. Do you oh, know if the stats are going down still in terms of like uh, like earlier like. Because for a while there with Tinder and all these other options out there, people were having like a crazy amount of sex and then the numbers started to drop. No, yeah, that, kids have less sex. Yeah, less sex. And they have it later. Yeah. Um, they're more likely to get married later. They're less likely to do drugs. Um, so, you know, when we talk about how kids- Crazy swing. Well, you know how we talk about like the helicopter parents and how kids are sheltered and we complain about it all the time? Yeah. I wonder if the- That was the one positive If thing the good side yeah. effect of that is, sure, we have more anxious- Kids that are kind of entitled, but we also have kids that do less bad shit. I don't think it has to do with that. I think it just has to do with awareness. Mm -hmm. I think a kid now, uh, and Enzo is a great example of this, like, you know, oh, maybe I'm thinking about doing some drugs. I'm thinking about trying some cocaine out. And like, you could easily like Google, you know, worst part of cocaine or scary cocaine store. You start Googling like things like that. There's no mystery there. Yeah, there's no mystery anymore. Where back when we were kids, it's just word of mouth. And your Uh, buddy who's trying to push- I tried it, it's fine. Yeah, oh man. Seeing a titty was like, oh. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think (laughs) it's- just too much. I just think that it's the the accessibility to information so quick- that you know, there's their kids are a little more reluctant to probably take more risk and do things like that because they and I believe that was in the book Igen. I think they actually you don't asked, think that surveyed, has a lot to do they, with more they, parenting. No, they they surveyed in the book Igen. They surveyed these kids and they actually asked them why that was like why why you're not having sex why why you're, because they know. Uh, divorce rates, and they know they they can look them up and mm-hmm. Google like how, what the what the chances of them getting divorced I, if they get married by the age of twenty versus the age of twenty five, and that keeps them from doing. I that. wonder if uh, the the ease of access to porn has reduced the amount of sex. I think that has a big contributor. I do too, dude. Like I'm sure that has too. Yeah, because think of the numbing effect that 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 the kind of accessibility that porn that there is with porn these days. Yeah. Imagine if you were a, a 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 18 year old today with the kind of access we have. going to count all the way uh, up. Yeah. 14, 16, 17, yeah. 31, well, 32, just, 30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, how, look how excited Dan Bilzerian is to have chicks on his arm. He's just like, Ugh. yeah, he doesn't even. I'm like, like, are you serious? He's bored. He's just bored. With I it. think he's so unhappy. Oh, yeah. I agree. Just, I do. It just looks like that. Huh? I think he's got some darkness in him. Totally. Yeah, I see his, the pictures he's posed like Douchebag Central with his, uh, his, his Instagram. <laughs> He's Is collecting. Really? He's collecting some winners in his He's collecting these days, all huh? all yeah. the fitness douchebags. Yeah. I'm not going to name them out. Name them. No, nah, let's let's do that <laughs> later. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you'll know who they are. Yeah. But you go on. It's like having parties and he's inviting all these fitness douches. Oh, <laughs> hey, we're all. Like, yeah. yeah. I need some guys. Yeah, combined IQ well, of fifty I, uh, with all three I'm of tired. us. I'm tired. I, I mean, bring in some guys. I I think that a, a, a lot of a lot of people that you know live on social media and post so much like that uh, you you have to be really empty inside and you you're missing a lot of personal care. if i posted that i mean part of why i don't keep up with even my instagram today is it it, it takes away from time with max it takes away from time with sure. my best yes. friends with my family and it's not that i don't want to engage with my community and 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 talk to the people that are following our our business and things like that like that's important to me too and i try and make time for it but the amount of time that some of these guys spend and girls too spend in there, you, you have to ask yourself, like, if you're spending all that time in this this internet world, like how much are you really in connecting and interacting with real people that really yeah. care about you? Not mm-hmm. somebody who's taking a picture right. with you because they have X amount of followers and you have X amount of followers and you're cross promoting each other. You know, I wanted to talk about this a little bit too because I was watching um this show, it's all about design, and they're going through Instagram and the people that basically created the UI for it and like revamped it and all this kind of stuff. And there was this guy that he, he looked so, uh, I, I guess he was, he just had this, this, this conscious of, about what he had done. Like he felt so guilty about the fact that before, I don't even know if anybody remembers even as you used to scroll, it used to stop. And then it would have like a button at the bottom where you could kind of go back to the top and all this. And then he just like eliminated the whole thing and made it an endless scroll. And after that, they looked at the numbers and statistics and people were wasting just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours per year uh, as a result of that one feature that he changed. 
Really? Yeah, yeah yes. they have no influence, right? Yeah, it was, oh, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't exactly. And so this is the this is the thing, like the near it all, right? Great conversation, like had had super solid bulletproof points, right? Right. But that was an engineering decision that literally just took like everybody by storm, and and they are just like monkeys, just. Bleh. Well, speaking yeah. of social media, you know the whole debacle of the last election, and and people blaming you know, fake ads and political ads and stuff on Facebook and Twitter. Did you guys hear what Twitter did? Mm -mm. Banned all political ads. Wow. wow. You cannot... That's a move. You cannot pay Twitter for a political ad anymore. That's cool. Isn't that like crazy? That. Well, I mean, I think it's interesting. It's cool. I just, I didn't like taking the politics out for a minute. Yeah, well, I like that you can't buy the, yeah, yeah, the ad. Yeah. I mean, the conversations of can course. still be had. Sure. Debates can still be had on there, which I think that's a great platform well, you, well, for that. That's a good point, actually. I didn't even think yeah. of that. I yeah. wonder how many, I wonder how the political parties are going right. to really squeeze that pay out. Pay for like fake bots. Have a bunch people of people doing, go on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you'll, def you'll definitely, they'll find a way to hack into it, right? Yeah. But I mean, better that than just, you know, paid, you know, you're getting paid ads. I think they they did it to get themselves like no blame. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, yeah. we don't, we don't sell them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, Facebook commented on that and said, we're going to continue to sell political ads because we think that it's uh, important to have political discourse. I think it's because Facebook makes a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're doing. We're going to do it. We're going to get all the money. Yeah, we're That's gonna fine. Keep, we're going to keep <laughs> yeah. it there because it's the right thing to do. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> Is that why you're doing it? Yeah. yeah so um, it's going to be very interesting because this next election coming up, I think the war that's going to be waged it's is going to be, be weird, bro. It's, it's going, going to be weird. And it's going to manipulate you. Listen to me right now if you're listening oh, to this yeah. podcast, okay? Here's the pa this is how manipulation works. You don't know. So really <laughs> stay awake and, and you know, here's Why here's am I buying maps right yeah, now. Here, <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Here's one tactic. One tactic is to find a, you know, a, a, a crazy you, you know, statement or something for someone from the opposing side and then pretending like it's what the other side says all the time. So they'll share, Republicans will share like, you know, liberals, you know, uh, saying that you can't, you know, eat, you know, uh, Mexican food anymore because it's appropriate and whatever. And you'd be like, those damn, you know, in reality, nobody's doing that, but they're making you think they are. Right. And the same thing on the other side. So pay attention. It's going to get really freaking weird. Look out. First question is from Maxibon Jr. Do macros really matter? Absolutely. They no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, they definitely matter. Um, it's important to know w what is in your food. Know what ma – so macronutrients are proteins, fats, and carbs. And those three macronutrients – macro meaning big because then you have micronutrients, which are things like your vitamins and your phytonutrients and stuff like that. But each macronutrient has a specific function in the body, and two of them are essential. Okay, what that means is – the two essential macronutrients are proteins and fats. And if you don't eat enough of either one of those, you'll have some pretty bad health consequences leading up to- uh, Eventual death. Po possibly. I mean, you could go so far as to uh, co to cause your body to, uh, to break down. So two of those are essential. So you, uh, at the very minimum, want to know what your minimum- intake or requirements are for both proteins and fats. Well, and how often did you guys- you know, especially later in our career when this probably you you probably became more aware of this. But how often did you assess a diet and go like, oh wow, this is probably why you feel this way. Your fats are extremely low. Right. You know, or you're not getting enough protein. Well, no wonder we're not building any muscle. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Totally. So this is where where macros really do matter. Now it's funny because it's actually I was actually just thinking about doing a post around this. So this is great that we're going this direction. Uh if you if all you cared about was losing ten pounds on the scale, just ten pounds on the scale, then it doesn't matter as much. The most thing, the thing that matters the most is calorie restriction. Is going from X amount of calories, reducing that by five hundred, a thousand calories every single day, or creating more calorie expenditure, and you will lose weight. Now the problem with that, and what I would see a lot with people that did this, that would, and this is common when you get clients that switch from eating bad food or and by bad I mean you know fast food and, and and sugar tons of sugar and processed foods and then all of a sudden they go to you know salads and chicken breast and eating like super low calorie and then running on the treadmill and then they lose 10 pounds but then we test their body fat when they start and then we test their body fat again after they've lost this 10 pounds and you know what happens a lot of the time they get fatter hmm. 
as a percentage. Right. Their mm. body fat goes up. And you're like, well, how's that work? How's that possible? If they that lost 10 dramatic. pounds, how could you get fatty? Like how the pause like yeah, that? I was, I was like, just, I was trying to wait for it. <laughs> it's fat. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> well, it, 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 I mean, how many people, I mean, at least for me, this yeah. was common. Did, did you see that that just demoralized them? How many clients, I mean, I used to have clients where we would do like the, the hydrostatic way or body fat test. And even though I was telling them to follow something, they were still kind of doing their own thing, you mm-hmm. know, going, doing more cardio, pushing harder, restricting calories. You know, they, they turned it into a game. Can I work harder? Can I restrict even more than what Adam's saying? And then we would remeasure a month later and they're down 10 pounds on the scale and they think they're winning and they look at the body fat percentage and it goes up. And they, then they look at me and they're like, what the fuck? Well, how right? is that possible? How is that possible? Well, you, if you lose 10 pounds of muscle mass but kept the same amount of fat mass on your body, that total fat mass now is a larger percentage of your overall body weight. And you don't even need to do that. All it has to be is one more pound over. So you could actually yeah, lose, you could, you you could could lose four pounds of fat but you lost six pounds of muscle and you'll be fat still and your body fat percentage will go up. That's right. Because it's the percentage, right? If you took the body fat of somebody who's, uh, you know, if you took someone who 10% body fat, but they weigh 120 pounds and you take their body fat and put it on someone who's got 200 pounds of lean body mass, that's, you know, they're going to be shredded Mm -hmm. uh, because it's about percentage. So that's a very good point. The other thing you want to pay attention to is this, is besides the minimum requirements of the essential macronutrients, proteins, and fats, there's also optimal amounts of especially proteins. Um, studies are pretty conclusive on this. If you want to maximize the muscle building effects of protein when you combine it with resistance training, you want to eat roughly 0.6 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight if you're a relatively lean individual. If you're really overweight, then you want to use your lean body mass. This is where you take your body fat percentage, remove the body fat from your weight, now you have your lean body mass. Studies show this pretty consistently. Eating within this range means you're going to build more muscle, uh, which means uh, you know indirectly you'll have a faster metabolism and you'll typically get better results. Protein is also more satiating. So if you eat a higher protein diet as a percentage of your overall calories, you're more likely to eat less calories. Now, part of this is because protein itself is satiating. The other part of it is because oftentimes in a person's diet, protein is where they get their whole natural foods. Yeah. If you look at the average person's diet and you were to just categorize their food in two categories, heavily processed and uh, unprocessed, most of the proteins uh, would be the unprocessed foods. In fact, that might, that might be the only things that they eat that are unprocessed. And unprocessed foods tend to also be uh, quite satiating. But I, you know, there's this thing about macros and calories. It's that uh, you know, they're important things to understand – you just don't want to get stuck uh, obsessing about them all the time. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you ignore them. You want to learn about them first. Yeah, I mean, like, definitely calories are, are you know, your first priority in terms of, like, being able to make sure that you're under a certain amount if, if my goal is to lose weight. But, you know, like, to, to bring it back to your satiating point, that was a big one for me to be able to, uh, you know, relate to my clients in, in, in terms of like being able to satiate yourself. So that way you're not still eating calories and it makes it easier. The process of like, um, you know, being able to delay the, the hunger onset. And so, you know, for, for me to eat like that was, was always like a better strategy than to try and just like minimize the amount of calories and keep that like same balance of carbohydrates Mm -hmm. that I had before. Right. A 2000 calorie diet where the macros are not ideal means you're going to feel worse. You're going to have less energy, less strength, hungrier, maybe even a worse mood versus a 2000 calories uh, diet where the macros are ideal for your body. You're going to feel much better. Now it's more complicated than that, but those are the two big rocks that you got to tackle first is calories and macros. Understand them and learn them then you can kind of move into a diet that's a little more, more relaxed. We would have to look at those things so much. It's funny that the bodybuilding community gets a really bad rap for this, but I actually really like the way a lot of them do this. Mm-hmm. And uh, many bodybuilders uh, don't even pay attention to calories. Mm-hmm. They only manage macros. Mm-hmm. And what what ends up happening when you well, do if that, you manage macro if you hit your macros you're going to hit your calories right right and so and that's all they focus on they're not really worried if it's you know twenty or thirty calories north or south that's less important to them as it is making sure that okay if I started off this 
<clears throat> muscle building program, and I was allowing myself uh, allowing myself 300 grams of carbs, 120 grams of fat, and you know 200 grams of protein. That's my starting point. And if I'm trying to build, I use you know typically carbohydrates or fats to increase those calories, and you can interchange those if you want. If I'm trying to cut or reduce. I reduce from carbohydrates or fat, and I can interchange those. And as long as I'm staying in a healthy range for my fat, I'm pretty good. And I think that learning to manage the diet that way, although it is a little more challenging for people, I think the lessons that you get from that uh, that will carry over into long-term uh, intuitive eating if you can eventually get there. Because I think you have to do those things first. That's the steps. Oh, that's part of the education. Yeah, if you're ever going to get to a place of intuitive eating – I believe you have to get to a place where you're not only counting calories, you're also tracking macros. So you kind of get an understanding of what, I mean, in an example of why I think this is so important, I mean, to over 10 years into my career of even counting calories, doing things, I actually had never done, I never weighed a sweet potato until I started competing. Um, but in the past, when we started, this was well before, um, you know, Fat Secret, My Fitness Pal. We used to have to. We I had a book called Calorie King. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And I would have to, you know, flip through it, and I would look down, and it would be sweet potato, yeah, one it, medium sweet potato. Right. It would be small, medium, or large. And I would look at a sweet potato, and I've got like five in my bag, and I see what the large one is to me. That's the big one, and then I see what a small one is, and then oh, this must be a medium one. So I, you know, medium. That's to, it's a me in comparison to the three that I have at my house. This is a medium one, so I put the meal. Oh my God. A little you know, off. When I when I started weighing it, I wasn't just kind of off. I was three X off. Yeah, the, yeah. the medium is like a, bigger than their large. Yeah, yeah. it's big <laughs> exactly. And so that was such an eye opener for me. And you know, I so I was gu guesstimating my calories off by three hundred plus calories just from that one food. And that there's examples of that in all kinds of different. Remember the uh, first time you weighed out five ounces of chicken breast? Oh yeah. You know, I, you get those big old, uh, you know, monster chicken breasts that they make. That they that are buy 10 the, ounces. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like yeah, a yeah. pound of chicken. You, know, you yeah. don't even realize it. And then you go, <laughs> and, well, I need, I'm supposed to eat five. Let's see what five ounces look like. Half. Right. Or you get a big juicy steak at a restaurant, you know, yeah. that's like a 16 ounce steak. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh, yeah. that's probably like oh, six or eight huge. ounces. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of things that you, there's a lot of value you get in, you know, diligently tracking your macros. And I, and I never, recommend someone staying in that place to like Sal's point. I think you can become obsessive about it. I think that it could also lead to an unhealthy relationship with food, but there's a tremendous amount of value with tracking for a period of time for you to get a really good understanding. So at least you know when you go through your day, oh, I have a pretty good idea I was eating about this much, or I'm really low on my fats, or I or, or how I was really low yesterday on my fats, so today I want to make sure that I up those. And so I think that, that that's important. The true takeaway is that there's a Max Bon senior. All right, next question is from Prime and Glory. Is there a hierarchy when adjusting variables in your training? Should you start with changing reps before changing tempo or weight? Would this apply to beginners and advanced lifters? Oh, this is kind of a cool question. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, you know, thinking about this, I would say hmm. the first thing you'd want to change, uh, definitely not the exercise. Um, here's a big mistake that I made as a, as a trainer early on. This is a big mistake I see a lot of trainers make when they design routines for their clients. Is they'll say, here's your workout for this week. Here's your workout for next week. Here's the workout for the week after. Radically different exercises. And, and that's because you think you got to make the workout super different and weird and exciting each time to keep the the person's interest. The problem with that is that they don't the, the client never builds the skill around the exercises to really reap the benefits. Like for example, when the first time you learn how to do a barbell squat, a lot of that initial learning process is just learning how to do it right. Once you kind of get yeah. to the point where you feel comfortable to squat, then you can really start to reap the benefits. Well, that's why I think, yeah, like a tempo would be like my first sort of, uh, uh, you know, variable. I'd change for a beginner. Like that would be something like that- Like slow down. Yes. Yeah, so you start slow and then you start like gradually increasing the speed with that like first and then we'll go to yeah. like reps. Re reps would be the next one. Yeah. Um, reps, you know, if you're doing a workout, let's say you're following a workout for three weeks and you want to change things up to get your body to respond again, change rep ranges. Maybe you're training in the eight to 12 rep range. Try going in the three to five rep range or the fifteen to twenty rep range. 
um, and stick with the same exercises. Master those exercises before you decide to switch up, you know, the, the movements themselves. That's usually the last thing yeah. that I'd say. Now, uh, to add, now what, what I want to add to that is that I 100% agree, especially when talking about beginners. When talking about an advanced lifter or how I do things personally now, because I've done all the exercises, I've done them at uh, all different tempos, at all different sets and reps, and I feel pretty comfortable doing anything, and I can get right into the groove of just about every exercise because sure. I've done it so much. I actually like to kind of manipulate all at once because then I know I get the greatest ad adaptation and I get the greatest change from that. You know, if you if you manipulate one variable, you you are sending a, a a different signal to the body, so you'll get some change from that, which is great. And that's per and for a beginner, that some change is, is going to be much mm -hmm. greater as you get more advanced and you've done all the tempo changing, the sets, the reps, and all that stuff so many times over. That the that change gets smaller and smaller, but it still happens. But it's smaller and smaller. So now, like when when I change something, I change everything up a lot. So a lot of times I go, okay, I'm transitioning over into a new program. I'm gonna not. I'm gonna change the exercises. I'm also gonna maybe go a little explosive. Uh, I'm I, I'm gonna change the weight. I'm obviously gonna go lighter because I'm going on much. Ex I'm doing mm -hmm. explosive way training, and I'm gonna train that way for a while. And then I go, okay. What is the most drastic from explosive and lightweight in these movements? Okay, maybe something that's more f foundational, grinding and slow and heavy. Uh, that would be like the polar opposite. So I'm always trying to manipulate uh, many variables when you're because I'm advanced. Well, that makes sense because over time, y you know, your body's going to be less responsive to these di like minor changes, mm -hmm. right? In the beginning, it's going to be very res everything it's going to respond to, right? So now to kind of like piece that together and sort of like if, if you were to then stack like two variables and then go to three and right. then go to the full yeah the full spectrum of variables to, to shift it makes a lot of sense if you've been in the game for a long time yeah, and now being advanced means you've been working out for a long time and you know your body and you know how to move in a variety of different exercises now most of you don't fall in this category most of you radically changing your workouts you probably want to keep it to maybe once a quarter so I'd say every three months or so, then you can radically change the exercise. So if you're following our programs, if let's say you're following the MAPS programs, well, that's roughly four MAPS programs or five MAPS programs a year, where you start off with one program, follow it all the way through. Our, you know, The programs tend to change the rep ranges. We'll change some of the exercises in there, maybe sometimes the tempo. But then after three months, it's a radically new exercise. It's a new pro. excuse me, a radically new exercises or new program. Um, that would be how I would design it for most people year round. But I think that the takeaway is that these are very, you don't want to get stuck in a variable, you know, uh, sequence for too long. Mm -hmm. Getting stuck in any program where it's the same reps, same sets, same exercises, same amount of weight. If you get stuck, your body won't budge. It's just going to, at the very least, you'll maintain. Uh, excuse me, at the very most you'll maintain. Um, at the least, you may actually even go back a little bit. Sometimes switching up variables is what keeps you from regressing, especially as you get older and you reach your kind of genetic limit. Sometimes you got to switch it up so you don't start sliding backwards. And the opposite is true also. You don't want to be switching it up so much that you don't give your body a chance to adapt and get good at whatever the movements right. are. So there's that sweet spot. And obviously if you fall, and I know, uh, I know Prime and Glory has... I think most of our programs. He does. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for you, if you've gone through all the MAPS programs, you know, you're you're now starting to move closer to the advanced and you have more room to play with some of these things. But for most people, I would recommend that they go through all the – because we do all this for you. That's the idea of the programs is we phase them for you. We manipulate reps. We manipulate tempo. We change the complete adaptation. So you're focusing on something totally different every quarter, like Sal was saying. So yeah, you, once you've kind of gone through all of that once or twice and you've done that, like you can start playing with some things. Otherwise, we've kind of figured all that hierarchy out for you and we've implemented it into the programs. Next question is from Thomas VP Graham. How do you deal with all the people in the industry when they preach to you that their diet or workout is the best one? You laugh. Yeah, when yeah. I hear that, I know I'm dealing with someone who has little to a no shuckster. Yeah, little to no experience working with a lot of everyday people. Here's the thing about fitness and nutrition. 
There isn't a lot of good, big, long studies done on lots and lots of people. There just aren't. And, and they're hard to control. If we were to do a big study yeah. on 5,000 people, we'd have to lock them up in a lab, control all the factors, see what works when, and then we can start to make some general statements. It's unfortunate because it would dispel a lot of these myths right away. It would. and you no. Know, so the best thing that we have is experience. And I know when I hear someone say, oh, you know, paleo, that's the best diet ever. It's the absolute best diet or keto or vegan or kettlebells or, you know, machines or going to failure, not going to fail. It's the best. This is the best one ever. I know I'm dealing with someone who hasn't worked with a lot of people. I This took me a while to learn. Um, I remember the first time I worked with a client who genuinely was had the best performance and the best health eating a purely vegan diet. I remember the first time it happened. I had a couple of these where there was a gentleman that I trained and you know he was he was a a doctor um he was very metic meticulous about his tracking he wrote everything down he did everything that I told him was kind of like the perfect client and uh then he went off and did uh one of those um you know doctors without borders you know volunteer work or whatever and he lived um with a uh, in this poor part of the world and all he ate was a vegan diet, and he did a lot of hiking, a lot of walking in order to get from one village to the next to to you know perform his services or whatever. He comes back, and he's like, dude, he's like, Sal, I got to tell you, I've never had so much energy in my life. I feel amazing. He goes, I think it was the diet. I think i just not eating meat. I think meat makes me feel not so energetic. Now, you know, here I am, a personal trainer. This is probably seven years into my career, and I'm like, nah, you know, meat's got a lot of nutrients for most people. It's the best thing. At this point, I hadn't really settled into the like individual variants. I had kind of you know developed some dogmatic views on certain things. We experimented, and sure enough, it worked best with them. I couldn't argue it. Now, I mean, I've encountered a couple other people that way. Now, I've encountered people who are like that with carnivore. I've, I've worked with people who mm -hmm. have a reaction to almost any other food, so they eat just meat, no shit, and they feel best and perform the best. So when I hear someone saying they have the best answer, this is it, I know that they don't know much. You just haven't worked with a lot of people, right? Yeah. Because you can't make that statement about. Um, there's general truths, definitely. Um, you know, so there's definitely some crazy shit that's out there that won't work for anybody. Um, but but boy, you know, when you consider, for example, the 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 human metabolism, it's it's one of the most complex things that we've ever identified in the universe. And when you when you add to that your microbiome, which is very unique to you your emotional experiences with food, uh, your, the, the, your, your cultural experiences, how you were raised, your, how you react to certain things, context, all that stuff. When you throw that all into the mix, mm -hmm. boy, how you respond to food is going to be very different it's from person to person. It's not only so that. much biodiversity. It's, yes. it's not only that. When you, when you understand that your body is an adaptation machine, that whatever was best for you 10 years ago may not be best for you today. That's right. So You're even not if, the same person. So even if that statement is true that this is the best workout and the best diet yeah. and somebody followed it and they're like, yes, this is true. This was the best diet and the best workout. It might be for that moment in your life. Mm -hmm. I would and I would challenge you that in five years from now, that's not true. Mm -hmm. How much is your how much is the, the diet that works so well for you at twenty five? Would it work for you today no. at forty? Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't. The the way you were training, the, the the programming that you did when you first started and you saw your first gains in muscle, did it work for you? Fuck yeah, it did. Would it work for you still today? Probably not. So when you understand that that the body is constantly trying to overcome and adapt and get good at whatever you throw at it, then even if it is the best thing right now. It probably won't be from later on from now. So to say things like that is just naive to me. So I just yeah. chuckle when I hear it's that. It's super naive and it's but it's super common. You know, everybody has the best answer and mm -hmm. you know, even the workouts that we create, you know, we wrote our workouts to work best for most people. But I know that there's gonna be some of you that they're not going to be the best right. workouts for you. Not a lot of you. Um, I'm, you know, we base our workouts based off of all the clients that we've worked with over the last 20 years. And so we generally know what's going to work west best for most people, but you'll never hear us make the statement. This is the best for everyone. Yeah. And even then we're trying to consider all the different 
avatars of people we've come across. And so there's still room uh, for a very specific direction that uh, they can go with their training program that we haven't even scratched the surface of yet. And it's the same, like, that, that's what's so frustrating about, like, diets, because, like, if you think about it, they're, they're, they, they have to sell it that way. They have to sell uh, to get your attention that this is the answer that you've been waiting for, even if it doesn't specifically apply to you. You know, maybe one out of like a couple thousand people, it does. Now they got you. They got you in the system. It's like this, this, this net they're casting out and they're trying to get, get you. I'll give you a great example, okay? Um, I think uh, resistance training, if you had to compare it to any other form of exercise in the context of modern life, and you only had to pick one form of exercise because you had limited time, like most people. I think resistance training for most people would be the best, absolute best form of exercise. Now, why do I say most people, not all? Well, let's say, let's say Mrs. Smith is listening right now, and she's like, I got you know 60 minutes or 90 minutes a week to work out. Sal said resistance yeah, hey, training. Honey, I swear though. Yeah, re- resistance. Tra- he Sal said resistance training is the best but I really fucking hate lifting weights. My gosh, I hate it. I can't stand it. Every time I do it, I just wish I wasn't doing it. Guess what's not the best form of exercise? It could be physiologically the best form of exercise for her, but she hates it so much she ain't going to do it. So it's not the best form of exercise for you, Mrs. Smith. Uh, we need to do. We need to pick something that you're going to actually do. So that's just one example. There's so many different factors that it's so silly for somebody to make a statement like, this is it, this is the best for everybody totally wrong. When you hear that, you know you're dealing with someone who is either full of shit and they know it, or they're full of shit and they don't know it. Either way, they're both full of shit. Next question is from Nial Robert Curran. What are your tactics for keeping your wife on your side, such as (laughs) keeping communication smooth and avoiding arguments? Having my wife angry is a main stressor for me. <laughs> who, picked, who picked this question? <laughs> just, 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 like, he, he, he like asked me if he should put it up. Like, yeah, dude, let's talk about this. Who cares? <laughs> my wife doesn't listen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm like scot free. Yeah. No, yeah. man. This yeah. is, uh, you spike her drinks, right? That's how I you do, do it. Do. How do you do Slowly. it? Yeah. How, do you, how, how do you do it, guy? Let's hear it. <laughs> no, to keep the peace. I mean, there's lots of like mental warfare you got to play. You know? <laughs> There's lots of strategies you got to apply, and, and and you know you got to be constantly looking like you're doing things. You know, that's what I've I've found that out. They really hate it when you're sitting down and like enjoying yourself. They're like, no, like this cannot happen on my watch. You know, so you just got oh wait, pretend, I, pretend doing, to be busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like knitting or I'm doing something. Like, I'll, I'll just grab something, chopping wood. Yeah, yeah. I'll tie the kid's shoes. You know, real. Quick. Quick, you know, make sure. you know what I hear when I hear this question. It right. sounds like a guy that doesn't that is a poor listener. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> it sounds like a, you know what I mean. Like, hey, yeah. what do I do? My wife's always pissed uh. off. Like, well, maybe she's mad for a reason. I mean, maybe, maybe talk to her. You right. might be dealing with a crazy person, sure, but you yeah. might be. It might be your fault. You know, that maybe why she's saying. I'll tell you what's a big one that I learned uh, not that long ago. This is a common. Apparently, this is a common problem um, among a lot of people, but especially men. When somebody, when your wife or your girlfriend comes to you with a problem, an issue, she's complaining about something at work or she feels bad about a certain thing, your job, it's not your job to fix it unless they ask you to. Don't you, did you, do you, do you remember White Men Can't Jump? Yeah, yeah, I do remember, remember, that, remember that scene. Yeah. I forgot. Remember yeah. that scene where she throws the water in his face? Yeah, and she's I like, "I don't want you to get me a glass of water." And he's like, "What the fuck? You said you're thirsty. Yeah. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you to solve my problem for yeah. me." And he's like, so confused. <laughs> like, huh? I don't get this. Yeah. No, this that is, explains everything, dude. Right this there. is a big one. So I'm reading this book by Dr. John Gottman, who's a brilliant uh, researcher on uh, on relationships. Actually, probably one of the only researchers on relationships you should pay attention to because. Not only did he follow couples for decades, but his studies uh, and his conclusions have been duplicated several times. The thing about studies on relationships and psychology, very few of them are ever duplicated, so it's hard to trust any of them. His have been duplicated by different people several times, so there's definitely some truths in there. And one of the things that he communicates is don't you don't need to fix anything. If your wife comes to you and is like complaining about something about the kids or whatever – just be like, man, you're right. That really yeah. does suck. Like empathize. Like, like yeah, that's hard. I, I can see yeah. how you feel that way. Like I, that, that really sucks. I would feel the same way. 
and it's like a weight off your shoulder. Yeah. Like you yeah. start doing this, you know, I, I was, you know, with Jessica, like we'll have these conversations and I'm always trying to fix, which just causes fights. Then I tried doing some of this where I'm like, yeah, that does, you know, cause she'll come to me and be like, I don't know. She'll it really something. is the most common thing. Cause it's, you do want to get in there and be like, well, this is how I would handle no. it. And then you kind of coach them on it. Yeah. Bad move. Yeah. But, she'll be like, oh, I, you know, I've got a headache. This She'll come up to me, for example. Here's a common no, one. Just like, empathize. She'll be like, oh, I got a, I got a really bad headache. And I'll be like, well, maybe. Maybe you shouldn't eat, you know, chocolate past eight o'clock, or maybe yeah. maybe it's this thing that you're doing, and it just causes a fight. Instead, I'll be like, "Fuck, that sucks that your head hurts again," and then we're done. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't gotta <laughs> yeah, fix anything. It's so liberating. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's really a bit. It's a it's a real common one. So. Yeah. The the ninja move that I was gonna give you was just practice not giving your advice and your opinion until it's asked. That's the same one, yeah, right? That's like <laughs> yeah. like literally like. She comes to you and she's venting or she's telling you the problem she has or she's upset at you, this or that. Agree and ask questions. Agree and ask questions. Agree and ask questions. Why, honey? Or how do you feel that? What makes you feel that way? Oh, really? And just keep prodding and asking questions and just listening until you get the, well, what do you think? Or what should I do? If you don't hear what do you, th- what do you think or what should I do? Don't fucking tell her what you think and don't tell her what she should do. <laughs> yeah. And literally that hack in itself will save you so many fights. And then the other thing that has helped us like tremendously in, in our in our relationship is actually just carving out time every single day. It, we uh, I guess this is what happens when you get older. Uh, I'd never thought that this would be something that I have to prioritize. But, you know, going for a walk after we have dinner is just always has been an incredible hack for our relationship. You know, we both have busy lives and a busy day and lots of stuff going on and uh, that could be that we're dealing with or whatever. And it could not even have anything to do with her, but I'm frustrated with work stuff or other stuff. And if I don't get a really non-distracted conversation one on one with her, sometimes that will bleed into something she is doing or to Justin's point, what he is not doing like don't allow that to happen you know make time for yourselves where you don't have kids around tv's not on your phone's not in front of you and you're just just you and her and it doesn't have to be a long time 20 to 40 minutes you know carve it out i recommend walking we're fitness podcast we talk about health there's lots of benefits to just moving and walking go for a walk with her on a daily basis and just how was your day, hon? And be there to listen and mm. ask questions. Compliments go a long way. <laughs> yes, this is another one. I've so do flowers, right? Yeah, yeah. Massages work really well, but don't expect, don't do massage thinking no, you're gonna no, have no. sex. No, no, no. They know that every trick. guy does that. Yeah, they know that yeah. trick. Hey, you want a yeah, massage, yeah, honey? Yeah. Start massaging the glutes. Unless you're dating, <laughs> unless you're dating my girl, sex <laughs> seems to solve a lot of our there. problems too. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Don't what not well, to do. Yeah. Don't blame her problems on her mood. That's that'll fucking. That that does not go over well. You, well, know what I mean? you must be like, like PMS. Yeah, you sure you're not? Don't just, say that. You sure you're not just in a bad mood? Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. Does not yeah, work really well at all? Yeah, that'll backfire. Terrible. Anyway, with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, Adam at mindpumpadam, and me at mindpumpsal.